Joining us now are two military veterans from Academy Securities, an investment banking firm that is majority owned by veterans. Phil McConkie, he's a former Navy helicopter pilot and NFL player, and Rachel Washburn, she's a former U.S. Army intelligence officer. Welcome to you both. Rachel, I'll, I'll start with you. What do you think about your experience makes you valuable to a company like Academy, and how did you find them, or did they find you? Yeah, that's a great question. So I was an intelligence officer in the Army for six years, was brought on to Academy about two years to help develop their geopolitical intelligence group. So I work with 13 retired admirals and generals consulting our clients and partners on how geopolitics impacts markets, their operations, um, and really just the, the volatility that we're seeing in the markets today. And, and Phil, you guys prioritize hiring vets. Uh, is that right? Well, we like to have a combination. We need a Wall Street veteran to pair with a military veteran. We think that combination is dynamic and we can extract more value for our customers. The Wall Street veteran has the know-how, the market expertise, the network, the ability to produce revenue day one, where the military veteran has something that's very valuable to Wall Street. Honesty, integrity, loyalty, teamwork, and owe something called service. These are young men and women that join the military not to get paid a lot of money. They join the military to be part of something bigger than themselves and to serve our country. Well, here, here to, to all of that. And, and, and Rachel, when you did, did you find it difficult leaving active service and, and transitioning into a job? And, and as you did transition, uh, did Academy Securities help you do that? Oh, absolutely. I mean, when you leave the military, you're leaving your family. You're leaving an incredible sense of camaraderie. So there is a significant transition and uh, a dynamic shift. But at Academy, that camaraderie exists. The, those moral and values are all inherent in Academy. So it certainly was a much smoother transition. And I work alongside 40 percent veterans. The firm is 40 percent veteran staff, which is incredibly significant and speaks to Academy Security's authenticity. Bill, you know, all of this seems to make a lot of sense to me, but you hear an awful lot of stories about very qualified veterans that have a very hard time finding work. So what's everybody else missing here? Why are people looking over perhaps very qualified veterans for some open positions? Yeah, it, it's not only the right thing to do to engage and hire and train a military veteran. It's the smart thing to do for your company, uh, for your entity. Listen, I joined the military after a war ended. That's how old I am. Vietnam had just ended. That's when I joined the military. Rachel and her colleagues joined the military. They volunteered after we were attacked on 9-11, the devastation not too far away from where all you are, are sitting right now. They joined the military after the war started in Afghanistan. They joined the military after the war started in Iraq. That tells you all you need to know about who they are and what their character is. Listen, I played in the NFL. I was a punt returner. I was a small guy. They said I had a toughness and courage. Rachel and her colleagues, those people that we're talking about, have more toughness and courage in their pinky finger than I have in my whole body. How would you not want someone with that kind of character and that kind of service join your company, whatever it is? R Rachel, pivoting to uh, the, the day job you have uh, now, part of that is advising on geopolitical risks and assessing how that uh, influences the market. We talk a lot already about the U.S.-China trade war. So putting that to one side, which geopolitical risks out there do you think are underpriced? Uh, by, by investors at the moment. So we've had a long view that Turkey is going to be a, a pretty significant problem. Over a year, our advisory board has been saying Turkey may leave NATO. And one of the viewpoints that we've had and that we've signaled to that's incredibly significant of the shift in the U.S.-Turkey dynamic is the military-military relationship that has atrophied over the last year. It's usually the last one to go when diplomatic e economic relationships are challenged. The military-to-military -military ones stayed the strongest. So now that's atrophying, and we're seeing that play out in everything in northern Syria. Well, Rachel and Phil, we thank you both uh, very much for joining us today. But much more importantly, today of all days, thank you for your service. Please.